most respected and revered dignitaries on the dais, Padma Bhushan, Prof. Dr. R. D. Lele, Lieutenant General, Vice Chancellor, Dr. Madhuri Kanitkar, Executive Director, Comhad, Dr. Uday Bodhankar, Executive Director, Aki, Dr. Swati Bhave, Vice President, Yashwan Bhave, Dr. Vikram, Secretary Sharmila, Madhumati, Anil, all the members of Prof. Dr. Lele's family and very distinguished, worthy baby gets. Namaskar. Apan Lele Sarancha Karakramala Alele Ahod. Ani Manun Surwat Mi Marathi Tun Karte. Ai Vadlan Chanantar Pai Dharavit. Ashi Jikai Vakti Matwa Ahed. Tachat Pai Dharna Joge. Ase Lele Sar. Sarva Pratham Ahed. Ani Te Aplesa Granche Lele Sar Ahed. Tansa Varanan Karaitas Hala. तर एकोणीसशे सत्तरमधल्या दशकातले कवी बाब बोरकर यांच्या मी कवितेने करते कविता अशी आहे देखणी ती पावले जी देखणी ती पावले जी ध्यास पंथे चालती वाळवंटात सुद्धा वाळवंटात सुद्धा स्वस्ती पद्मे रेखिती देर बाय मीनिंग दॅट अमिट्स ऑल ॲडव्हर्सिटीज Dr. Lele has been the torch bearer of obviously everything that is medical knowledge and medical wisdom. I wish to tell two stories of Prof. Dr. Lele which have really touched my brain and also my heart. The first story I feel is to, to tell you the astute most clinical opinion and clinical knowledge of Dr. Lele. He has been a giant clinician and that was exemplified once when at the JJ hospital he was sitting in his clinic and a government officer went for getting examined. He had backache and all the junior residents had seen him and obviously they said that this is all postural because he has to do a sedentary job, sitting job on the desk. But Dr. Lele saw him and then after about 5-10 minutes, there were no investigative modalities then. So he had to make a clinical diagnosis. And Dr. Lele said, the patient has TB of the spine with a psoas abscess. And all the residents were taken aback. What was this all about? And it was that when the patient was entering Dr. Lele sir's cabin, Dr. Lele had seen that he had a small limp and he was keeping his hip a little tight and that gave him a clue that there is a psoas abscess and the psoas abscess has come from the vertebral spine where he has got tuberculosis and he made a diagnosis, a fantastic diagnosis then. Patient was put on anti-TB treatment and the patient recovered. So this is what Lele sir as a clinician is to me. And the second point that I wish to make is a little bit about his communicative skills and to make everyone feel very, very happy and very pleased. Lele sir's family and our family have been family friends for more than four or five decades. And one day, as Lele sir was entering the lift, my mother and uh, Dr. Nilimak Shirsagar, who had just become the dean of the prestigious KEM hospital, my sister and myself, we were getting into the lift. And Lele sir said, Mrs. Bapat, I think your name should be written in Guinea's World Book of Records. So my mummy was absolutely astonished. She didn't know what he's saying and she was totally flawed. So then Lele Sal continued and he said, You are probably the only mother whose both daughters have become deans of two important colleges in Maharashtra. And that's what I think my mother's smile on her face and her pride knew no bounds. I still remember her face very vividly and I think that's what Lele sir meant to her. He had such a pleasant mannerism and a way he has to please everyone, young and old, big and small alike. I will never forget these two episodes, sir, wherein you have touched my life. 
Dr. Lele sir has been a very good father, a very good father-in-law, a wonderful husband and now nice charming grandfather to all his grandchildren. To put it in Swati's words, Swati as a daughter has inherited a lot from Lele sir and uh, she always says that I learned the science of medicine from Lele sir and possibly my mother taught me the art of medicine, the humanity and also the emotional quotient. And that was exemplified when Swati was in Nagpur Medical College. Well, she was an adolescent and Lele sir was the head of the department of medicine and they were living in government quarters and their maid servant suddenly had got severe, uh, I should say she had a miscarriage and she was bleeding profusely. Swati's mother saw that and Swati along with her mother, her mother told Swati to lift the girl. They both lifted this maid servant and they took her to the casualty. There Dr. Lele was and uh, along with an obstetrician, they both brought that lady out of shock and the lady survived. I think Swati learned everything that how she should become a doctor, the science and art of medicine and the seeds of becoming a doctor were sowed in Swati's mind then and today as, as an adolescent she saw so much then and now she is the head of adolescent medicine in so many ways in the IAP. Swati has been a torchbearer of IAP in many ways right from her presidential days to every field of pediatrics she has done so well and so we are very happy that we are having a wonderful Dr. Lele's oration organized by Dr. Swati Lele and Lele sir's family. I'm supposed to say a few words on what we are going to see in COVID times. Today's oration is on war on COVID. And I'm thinking that I should give my perspective on COVID in the sense what COVID meant to me and what COVID meant to women and children. And I will take you just two years ago, COVID began and none of us, no women could meet their grandchildren. No grandmas could visit their children, neither could they see the grandchildren. And therefore, all grandmothers became absolute experts in WhatsApp video calls. That was the need of the time then. So grandmothers became wiser and these 60 and 70 year old women became absolutely savvy on their mobiles and uh, WhatsApp started functioning very well on their mobiles. A little professional women became Zoom zombies. So everybody, maybe Ishani or maybe Lexi or maybe Swati, all of them became absolute Zoom zombies. Some of them went ahead. They started on Cisco Webex. Many of them went on to Google Meet, Google Teams and so on and so forth. And they had their, uh, well, digital savviness increased maybe multiple times. Some women were even smarter. They started poly work and they were doing their housework and were on Zoom calls for hours and hours from the house. And many of them, very, very highly tech savvy and IT professional young women, well, they not only did all this, but they were thinking ahead and they thought, what is the role of metaverse for them? And they not only did that, but they were thinking of artificial intelligence. They were thinking of augmented reality and all such platforms. And that was what was the plight of women. Maybe in metropolitan cities, maybe in many major areas in, in India and obviously world over. So in the COVID lock lockdown, women progressed in this way. And the progress was so much that finally they said, oh, we need to now digitally detox ourselves. And so came mindfulness followed by bitfulness and so on and so forth. So this was the progress of women on one side of COVID. But I'm going to draw your attention not to the Ishanis and not to the Lexis of these big cities. But I'm taking you straight to one Pallavi and Prabha from Nandurbar and from Usmanabad, two districts of Maharashtra. And let's see what is the plight of this Pallavi. Pallavi is an adolescent girl from Nandurbar and Prabha is a similar one from Bid. And what did we see? 
Pallavi's father lost his job. He came back home. There was no money at home. Lockdown was intense. Uh, he did not have an Android to give it to his daughter. The schools has closed. Getting an internet connectivity was a difficulty and there was no on Android. So school closures means no learning. Midday meals were all stopped. So all government schemes had stopped and there was no midday meal. So it so happened that uh, our Prabha and our Pallavi, both of them were sitting at home and they could not do any schooling. What did the fathers think? They thought, oh good, now you need to have only 50 guests to be called for marriage and in 50 guests a marriage is done. So it's a sustenance calm. And so Pallavi and Prabha both got married at their ages of 15. What went further? A study by the Department of Women and Child Government of Maharashtra has shown that in COVID times, the number of child marriages increased by 78%. So you can imagine what is happening to women and children in Maharashtra and the same could be the scenario all over the country. Now, as we progressed in this, a wonderful study in BMJ published by Purnima Menon from Delhi, it showed that in COVID times, the food insecurity has increased from 20% to 80%. So 80% of the population is becoming insecure on food. And that is what is going to result in the collateral damage. So I wish to draw your attention. My perspective is COVID on one side. Well, we are doing well in terms of vaccine. But let us see the collateral damage of COVID on all of us. And there lies the factor. The most important collateral damage is the nutrition. Effect of nutrition on COVID is enormous. And UNICEF's chief, Henrietta Foray, has said that, well, probably wasting in children is going to increase by 14%. So what aspects of nutrition are we going to see? We are going to see all the three facets of nutrition increasing and what we mean by triple burden on nutrition. The first burden is undernutrition with all its subjoins. That is undernutrition will cover up stunting, short children, wasting, very thin children and underweight children that is less in weight for age. So all these are going to increase. So we realize that undernutrition is going to increase in COVID times. Now that's not all. We think at the same time, we realize that obesity is also going to increase. So along with undernutrition, along with underweight, we are going to see children who are going to become obese. And it has been obviously seen. And do you know that obese adults and obese children do badly if they get COVID. And this was shown in one of the studies and they thought that every unit rise in the BMI in our uh, body mass index, they found that every unit rise in the BMI and we realized that there is a 10% increase in hospital admissions and ICU admissions. Now also imagine a very low BMI is equally bad. And we also found out in a study done in nine medical colleges, government medical colleges, it was seen that if you have a very low BMI, means if you are very thin, then also your chances of getting severe COVID and getting admitted to ICU increases. So friends, the message that I wish to give is look at nutrition. We are not against Zomatos. We are not against Dominoes. We are not against all this, but a dietary control and a perfect food is very, very, very necessary. But then let's come back to our Prabha and let's come back to Pallavi. Pallavi and Prabha have got married in COVID times. They are 15 years of age. And what do I say? They did not get green vegetables because they have come to their in-laws. Food may be scarce. Supply chain has been disrupted. And enough green vegetables are not available. We are not getting iron and folic acid tablets in government programs. All the government programs of iron folic acid, the anemia mukta bharat, the IYCF, IYCN, they've all come down by 30% because of the lockdown. And so our two girls, the adolescent married girls, did not get 
any of these supplies and because they did not get folic acid they could when they become pregnant they could develop neural tube defects and here i wish to quote a study an rbsk study the rashtriya bal swasthya karyakram of the government of maharashtra studied 21 lakhs of children they screened and they found out that in pre covid times they had a certain amount of neural tube defects children say 100 then it was seen that in covid times after a year the number of children with ntd neural tube defects born has increased four times so imagine the plight of women that we are not going to have children who are going to be born without neural tube defects if we do not supplement folic acid and if we do not supplement vitamin b12 and all such things so this is what is likely to happen and now on the top of it if prabha and if pallavi conceive what happens well in pregnancy lots of things can happen we should first remember that vaccine in pregnancy is very 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 important and what do we know about it that vaccine is important not only for frontline workers not only for health workers for all age people but we have now been successful in giving giving vaccine to even our 15 to 18 year old children but somehow vaccine to be given in pregnancy the covid 19 vaccine to be given in pregnancy is probably it has not caught the attention of many women and women are not coming ahead this vaccine in pregnancy is very safe but only 10% of the pregnant women have taken the covid 19 vaccine that means what do we realize the 90% women have not taken the vaccine and if such a woman becomes comes up to term and she is going to deliver and unfortunately gets covid what do we see a beautiful paper in jama journal of american medical association 2021 says that when they studied around 70000 women they found that if they had covid little prior to delivery then the chances of complications in the mother increased 22 times so the death in pregnant women the complications of pregnancy increased and not only that women produce preterm deliveries when women produce low birth weight deliveries and this incidence increased two times this is not only the study from jama but our own study from nair hospital done by dr malik also showed similar things she studied 925 women who came to deliver at the nair hospital in covid times and also found that the incidence of preterm labor premature babies and low birth weight babies has increased in covid times so do we now realize the importance of what nutrition is doing and such a girl like prabha and pallavi already undernourished already underweight not vaccinated and will produce a baby who is less than 2.5 kilos we can understand that this intergenerational cycle is continuing and is going to probably worsen the situation to my mind this is the significance of covid-19 on women and children on one side we find digital expertise increasing in leaps and bounds on one side we have the lexis and ishitas who are doing so well but on the other side we have the folk in the villages who have not got access to the di- digital media who are unable to go to school and who probably may deliver such children now if a child is born we have also to remember that such children are to be given proper breastfeeding as per all the guidelines so if a mother has delivered a baby and the mother has got covid but she is not ill she is slightly maybe feverish or maybe maybe little symptomatic but then she should remember that breastfeeding is the rule she must breastfeed the baby start feeding in the first hour of life and continue to do so we saw even on tv that a covid positive mother delivering the baby was wished away from the mother and no breastfeeding was given so a mother who has covid positive must safely breastfeed the baby she must touch the baby well only here the social distancing is not to be maintained she must give kangaroo mother care and such a baby if fed on the breast by the mother is going to be much better and much less 
disadvantages and so we encourage it strongly one message that i wish to give so we know that if the mother is in the in intensive care unit and she has covid then some other donor milks can be thought of but otherwise breastfeeding is the rule and all women who have delivered in covid times and non covid times have to follow it so that's one thing that we saw that the breastfeeding had reduced considerably and therefore i wish to harp on this good iycf practices good breastfeeding techniques full breastfeeding for 6 months of life and then proper complementary feeding with four food groups four colors four times a day in a mother and baby that we have to remember has to be persuaded by all of us so i have this to add and then a word on school opening this is my personal opinion but opening of the schools must be definitely in consonance with other openings that means if you open restaurants if you open malls if private coaching classes are going on then well the schools also follow it schools have to follow it so it would be important to vaccinate the grandparents in the house the parents in the house but children must be allowed to go to school and now we have vaccine for 15 to 18 year olds so vaccination must be done but schools must be open in consonance with opening of the other activities because covid 19 is by and large children do not suffer heavily by the disease it is mild in children though rarely there could be missy that is multiple organ involvement multiple inflammatory syndrome of children but that is by and large rare and therefore we have to see that schools open well and the children go to school so in short if i have to say my perspective on covid 19 and children we have to remember that friends this intellectually beautiful audience knows how to bridge the digital divide the social and economic divide which has increased in covid times and this bridging should be done with scientific bravery and benevolence so if i have to say in one sentence i'll say it again in a poem and conclude my speech thanking all of you mangalanni gandhalele sundaranche sohale mangalanni gandhalele sundaranche sohale सुस्वभावे गाऊयाते विक्रमांचे गोडवे सुस्वभावे गाऊयाते विक्रमांचे गोडवे धन्यवाद